Arsenal are going around thrashing teams and playing quite simply perfect football. With the team playing at their absolute best right now with so many players playing well every single game, a lot of credit has to go to them. And a lot of credit specifically has to go to Mikel Arteta and the tactics he has used. And this is how he has made Martin Odegaard one of the best players in the world right now with his new role. Let's get into it. Now I don't usually do two videos about the same player in a week, but I think Martin Odegaard's performances and his role in the team is basically driving Arsenal's insane goal threat and also making making him so much solid everywhere around the pitch. He has played this role a few times now, but I think against Burnley, you really saw the end form of it. And finally, you saw the end product we really wanted. That for the last five games, 21 goals scored, two conceded. You can't lie, they are playing at the best that they possibly can. Now, I've spoke about Ben White's role, and it's also very important to this team. Since Kivio has realised that he can't invert and he's been playing every game because he has to, he's obviously very good defensively. In order for this all to work, Arsenal have been winning the ball back and keeping a positional play like this. They've been having and Saliba and Gabriel usually at the back with the ball starting. Kivior plays a bit elevated on the left into a bit of a wing back role but he's mostly there to defend and White will come into the midfield to invert with Rice. This means Odegaard can usually go forward in this space making it a five players up the attack. Five against four usually against the defence. Now to counter this Burnley actually did a pretty compact system and they used a 4-4-2 pressing system with the two strikers usually marking the two inverted players being Rice and Ben White and the four players usually stayed in front of Arsenal's midfield but usually kept a distance so they could try and win the ball back. Of course Arsenal are a superior team to Burnley so they're gonna find ways through but this setup is not exactly very bad by Burnley and I can understand why they did it. This also meant when Arsenal were pressed a bit backwards and had the ball with Raya they would often have one striker usually covering that Gabriel to Raya movement and also a striker monitoring the area outside the box. This presses them up a lot and gets them very far up the pitch. Now the issue is when Burnley got too far up the pitch they often overextended and sometimes Sometimes the midfielder and the striker would often go and try and close down someone like Gabriel at the back and they would often get played through with White coming deeper and Odegaard also coming deeper to help. This creates an overload here and as soon as Burnley have two or three players that move forward this is a problem because Arsenal can get in behind and play through that press. This happened early on in the game four minutes in when Arsenal eventually scored from. Arsenal were able to pass through the team because Gabriel is pressed early and often Arsenal actually made a big mistake in this goal. Often when a player comes to that right side it gives Saka the opportunity to come deeper and get Arsenal out of the ball. But instead of that, Saliba just kind of hoofed the ball up because he saw he was getting pressed from two angles to get the ball up quickly. And with the Burnley defence very high up the pitch, a defender made a mistake and gave the ball away straight to Haver. A lot of credit here has to go to the position of Martin Odegaard. He's right on that high side by himself. He doesn't get the pass, but he's still there alert and ready. And when Arsenal quickly get the ball to rise and then out to Martinelli, as you can see here, everyone pushes forward. You've got Kivio looking for the overlap. You've got Rice in that defensive midfield position where you've also got Havertz, Trossard, Odegaard and Saka all in that right side pressing together. Brilliant awareness by Odegaard to be able to run up the pitch so quickly and also with Havertz and Trossard doing it as well. The players in the midfield transition seamlessly into the attack and you can see the space that Saka has got in a 5v4 situation here, potentially a 6v4 with Kivior coming up. And obviously with so many players eventually getting back for Burnley they try and cover the box and it comes out to Odegaard who does a brilliant finish into the, the bottom corner and this is something Martin Odegaard is so good at. This is the o -ring. She's so good within that little circle at scoring at all times and he's got a perfect volley putting it crisply into the corner and this system and his movement really helps that. He's the last person usually to come and help the press because he's helping the defence. This allows him to return and come to the edge of the box late and get shots in like this is. Now while everything there is something we're very accustomed to with Odegaard, this new role has adapted because it also makes him a viable option around the pitch. There was many points in the game where Arsenal often had their furthest players forward as actually being their two wingers finally pushing them up the pitch. Havertz and Trossard came into midfield to create a two pivot there to create that box midfield. Obviously with Odegaard and Rice creating the 0-1 in defence. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Odegaard and Ben White's communication has to be key and their positioning has to be really reliant on the other person. Because Odegaard creates this box midfield as the second midfielder and defence there, Ben White does no longer need to infer. This actually allows Ben White to become the overlap and be the fifth option on the Arsenal attack because they like having five going forward. This makes him sure that he pushes high and wide and will often occupy the right wing with Saka coming a little bit inside the pocket. And now because it takes Ben White sometimes to create this five, often he's not really the same option and doesn't really get Arsenal up the pitch. So this is usually exclusively used and Arsenal doing a transitional based movement when they're trying to get Odegaard to come deeper to push the ball up and they've just won the ball back in certain positions with maybe Odegaard being a bit deeper. This is Ben White's cue to go up in that right side. If Arsenal have sustained possession like what they usually want and pass it around a bit and slowly work their way up the pitch, you'd often 
well as see Ben White invert into that position. And Odegaard would be the last one to come up in the front five, but he'd be a little bit deeper than the others, but he would make that front five in the end. And now this is the real key change to Martin Odegaard's role and position because he'd often do these things in the last few games. In this game specifically, Burnley were playing a bit of a mid to high block. They actually were trying to win the ball up pretty highly and they were trying to be a bit confident with it. Odegaard, therefore, to overload the press and make sure Arsenal had more numbers in defence would often drop really deep between the lines of the front defenders. He would often come next to Gabriel and give him an option to go up. And often he would sit there and ask for the ball to his feet. This would force Burnley's high press to drop off into a mid block because they are worried about the gaps and the space Martin Odegaard then has because they have not accounted for him. And if someone does go towards Martin Odegaard, it then offers space for someone like Declan Rice or Kai Havertz to come deeper to pick up the ball. And this is all just such a perfect setup because Odegaard doing this means the Burnley players do back off and they go back to their usual 4-4-2. As you can see, you have the two strikers marking the two midfielders, the four players and the four. However, this allows Arsenal and Odegaard to push back up when he's finally pressed Burnley back to actually get Arsenal into their attacking system, the 3-2-5 which they want. This means as well Saliba, often on that right side, has a quite easy pass to Saka in the open because there's a 5 v 4 in defence and with the midfield being very narrow, it often means they can't get to the ball in time and Arsenal then therefore can create more attack. And the reason why this all works, the whole system works, everything is working right now is down to Martin Odegaard. That guy in the midfield is so key for this team because he's not only a Mikel Arteta on the pitch, he is like a Pep Guardiola. His tactical knowledge is insane. In order for Arsenal to get into their attacking process and get into their 3 2 5, he, when he moves up, he often directs Ben White to go in the middle. There was many points in the game where he's pointing, going Ben White, go and cover that area. There's also many points where he takes it upon himself to come back to get the ball and then to press and leave Burnley to make them go deeper and deeper. He often tells players to wait and wait for him so he can come up and help them and he is such a great player at doing this. And he's not the only one. Even when Odegaard drops deep, Trossard will often vacate the area Odegaard has left, creating five to go up front still and making Trossard a little bit deeper so he can usually play the ball through for the other players. We saw this a lot actually in the game where Trossard would come deep and try and do a through ball for Havertz and Odegaard obviously did as well. And you can tell Arteta trusts him so much because when even Arsenal don't have the ball, Odegaard's the guy that's actually in the start and press with Trossard. He's the guy that has to go and create it and start the press to go to the players, usually demanding other players to go to other players and keep your man-to-man -man system. He often marks one player but also shadow marks another, keeping in close range. He's very good at all these roles. This knowledge, leadership and ability is making Arsenal an unpredictable team. They can play so many different systems now in so many different games and Odegaard is truly the person that makes everything tick and everything work. Right now, I would say he is performing at one of the best players in the world and the tactical prowess from him and Arteta has made it so. Martin Odegaard is so good right now. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, I recommend going watch my video yesterday where I did a review of the game or go and watch the video I'm going to do after this in a few hours. I appreciate you guys as always. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one.